Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Junior Detective. It's ages eight and up, two to six players, and it takes 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to be the first to interview all of the witnesses and eliminate suspects until you have just one and you know where they are, and then you solve the case. And if you do it correctly, you're the winner. To set up, you take a case file, someone reads through what the case is, and someone should also place cards on the board that go with, uh, there's a number on each one of these cards. And you find all the numbers. So case one, number 22 for Dottie Drip, number 26 for Mr. Sweeps, and so on. So you find all of those cards, put them out on the table. There's a whole bunch of cards to go through. Um, once you place them out, you can put these to the side. You no longer need them. Uh, we have a three player game set up here. So each person picks which junior detective they wish to be, put the rest, extra tokens off to the side. Uh, everybody gets to have a card with the suspects and a sheet to take notes. Uh, and you're going to place, these are blockers, and you place them on the red spots with the black circle on the board. Uh, you can place, it doesn't matter which one is placed in any spot. You could put them wherever you like, as long as they start out here, they can move during the point, um, during the course of the game. And at that point, uh, you have your sleuth cards off to the side, uh, this decoder, a uh, mirror, and a solve card for the very end of the game. You are ready to start. Each player rolls the die. Uh, whoever rolls the highest number gets to go first, and we'll say it is purple. It is this player, and they get to go. So purple goes first, they roll the die, and when you roll, you get to move any direction. Everybody starts out in the junior detective headquarters, and you can pick any direction to go, um, but one, two, three, four, you can't go past these blocker spots. Uh, you can, if he had, let's say one, two, three, four, five, if he'd rolled a six, you can still choose to stop on the witness card. You don't have to keep on going for a perfect roll. You do have to get a perfect roll to land on one of the thumbprints or the bicycle spaces because those have special things that they get to do. But all you do is you get to one of these spots there at Jackie Russell and you flip it over and it's going to give you some information about uh, the suspect. So, uh, this one says the culprit had glasses. Um, you don't have to use the red, uh, the decoder to um, be able to see this, but it makes it a lot easier. So then you don't tell everybody that's just for you to know. And they would write it down here. There it turns over, it goes clockwise. We'll say this player's blue. They're going to roll the dice. Uh, we'll say they get a four. So they go... One, two, we'll have them go over here. The thumbprints, you get to have a sleuth card whenever you um, land on one of the thumbprints. And they do a variety of things. Uh, they One lets you get on your bicycle and ride. If you land on the bicycle spot, you can go to any spot on the board that you want to. Bicycle's really great. So sometimes you flip over a card that lets you do that. Uh, some of them let you move the hiding tokens that they block the paths as well. So you can move those wherever you like. Sometimes when you draw the right card, um, sometimes they'll tell you to visit a specific uh, witness. Uh, sometimes they'll have you move these blockers, the hiding tokens. Um, you can move them. That can be really useful because you can block off somebody else's path. Uh, sometimes they make you move back to the junior detective headquarters. Uh, sometimes they make you share information that you have found. They say share what you found from this or this character. So all sorts of stuff can happen in here. Um, this player is going to Pepperoni. So they go here and they would look at the card, decode the card, and uh, write it down. Uh, so if they land on the bicycle, they can go wherever they want. There are two special witnesses. Uh, one is Mrs. Wise. In most of these cases, 
one of the witnesses is lying to you and their information is not correct. So when you go to Mrs. Wise, you always have to use the mirror and then you use the mirror and you can read the card off of the mirror and it will tell you which character isn't telling the truth. And so then you can cross off that person's info or you know it's the opposite of that. Uh, so if they say the character has braces and this person says that they're lying, then you know the person, are, it's the opposite of that. Um, the other special character is the spy. The spy has a very special card that just has a bunch of uh, letters on it. You have to rub your hands together on this until you've warmed up the card and then letters appear. And you've, I mean, you have to do it for a minute. I get to help my kids generally when we do this. So you warm it up, then only certain letters are there. And that tells you the location of the culprit. It's always at one of these four hiding places. So you just keep on going around the board, interviewing. Usually you end up going to all of the witnesses until you have it down to a single suspect. At that point, you need to make your way to whichever uh, character, whichever hiding spot um, the spy has told you they're located at. So then if you go here and you know the correct uh, uh, suspect, then you get to look in the case file. And I'm choosing case file two to show the end of a case because case file two uh, has, uh, it's incorrect. There, it is not, uh, they have something incorrect in here. You can't actually solve it. All the other cases are fine so far that we've done, but case two, you get conflicting information with two of the characters. So it's, um, skip this one. All the rest of them are fine. Case two is not. Uh, and so then to solve a case, you place the solve card on top of it and it will show the location of the culprit and the number of the culprit. So for case two, the one that you're not going to rent place anyway, you would go to, it is the clown. So if they were at the clown and they said it was character number one, then they would have it correct and they would have won that case. So that's how to play junior detective. The target demographic for this game is kids, especially if they're kids who like playing games like Clue and you want something a little faster and not as dependent upon everybody else giving correct information. I don't know what it is, but every time I played Clue as a kid, somebody would give a clue wrong and it would mess up uh, the, the result of the game. And it was very frustrating, but I'm totally over it. Uh, the rule complexity is easy. Uh, once you play through the first time, you have it all of it down and there are 40 cases in the game. None of them get more difficult. They're just different. So it's the same thing, just slightly different every time, which means your kids can totally play this without your help after the first time, which is great. Uh, how competitive is this game? It's medium. There's only one winner and you can do things to each other throughout the game where you're moving other people's characters around or you're blocking them a little bit. But we quickly found that it didn't really do that much negative to the other person. They were able to get out. It didn't really hamper their gameplay too much. So it was more like a fun, busy thing to interact rather than something that would really harm the gameplay. So it doesn't seem like that results in hurt feelings, which really matters for kid games. Uh, the replay value is high. Kids love a good whodunit, and this just has some really fun elements to it, and uh, it's fun every time you play. Uh, similar games, if you like this one, Detective Charlie is geared perhaps just a little bit younger, but it is a cooperative whodunit with a certain number of cases. I think it's six cases. You can only do each of the cases once, but they're really fun. And then once you've played through, you could pass on the box to somebody else and they can enjoy the game. Uh, and then on the other end, Micro Macro Crime City perhaps skews just a little bit older than this, but uh, it's essentially uh, Where's Waldo? plus crime and uh, it is also a cooperative and we've been having a blast playing this. I've been playing through with my 10 year old son. My husband's been playing through with our nine year old and we're fairly uh, careful about content and 
we're okay with this for them, but just check it out before you uh, you get the game. But kids love whodunits and Junior Detective is so fun. So you should check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother. <laughs> <laughs>